Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing card five in my capsule paper crafting challenge for the month of August. For those who are unfamiliar, I have a limited amount of supplies that I've given myself for the month and I just challenge myself to come up with new fun things to do with them. So today's card, um, I'm actually going back to a technique that I used on day one. I loved it so much and I wanted to try it with a different form of stamp. Still lots of solid space on the stamp, but it's stripes. And I thought that would be really, really fun to do. And I'm also mixing it up with some different colors and just trying a few different things out. So let's get into it. I'm starting out with the brushed stripe background stamp set from Concord and Ninth. This has a similar look to that You Matter stamp I used on my uh, capsule card one. It has kind of this brush stroke, kind of rough edge look. And I was so fascinated with that direct to stamp, like it was kind of like an abstract inking. I was obsessed with that look and I thought I would try it again with this stripe stamp. I'm going to be picking out a few different colors from Concord and Ninth. I've got four colors that I picked out. Sorbet, Grapefruit, Buttercup, and Sea Glass. And I've never used these colors together before and I wasn't sure how well they would overlap. But it turned out so well. I kind of want to do even more of these. Started out by inking up kind of the top corner with Buttercup. And then just... I thought I would need my paper towel to soften the edges, but really you could skip that step. So I'm pressing down my stamp and now I have this kind of rough edge yellow shape just in that top corner. I'm now taking sea glass and I have not cleaned my stamp. I'm going to let the colors overlap just a little bit as I add this sea glass onto the stripes. So I'll stamp that down in the exact same place once again. And then now I have this yellow and the sea glass color and then a little bit where they overlap. I'm now using sorbet and I'm going to bring this in in just a few little spots. Um, I really like the look of like the corner of the ink pad on the capsule card one. So I made sure to have a few of those little spots. Stamped that down and where the sea glass and the sorbet overlap, you do get a little bit of a muddy color. And I was really concerned about that at this point, um, but I persevered and I kept going and I'm glad I did because this initial stamping is actually what I used on my card. So I filled in the rest of the areas with grapefruit. And then I realized that I wanted just a little bit more of that yellowy color in that bottom right corner. So it would be opposite from where the plain yellow is at the top. So add a little bit of yellow to that bottom corner and just stamp directly over the top of that sorbet color. It's just going to intensify it, give it more of a little orangey shade. I thought that variation in color would be nice. So there's my first try. The second try, because I wasn't really loving that kind of muddy area that I got. So I decided to try it again and kind of mix up where the colors were placed. I also changed the order that I color, uh, stamped each color in. And I tried to get more of a mix of color going across. So it wasn't like one corner filled with yellow. It was kind of a little bit of everything. And I love how all of these overlapped. I think it turned out so well. And I really, really love this second version as well. Like I mentioned before, I did end up using that first version and I'll tell you why in a little bit. After the second version, I thought, you know, I wonder if I could stamp the stripes and then stamp them again and fill the gaps in. So this third version is exactly that. I also like how this one turned out, but basically I just did exactly what I did with the first and second versions. And, but this time I used only grapefruit and sorbet on the first stamping. And then I, uh, I made sure all the ears were filled in. So I did have to go back and stamp a little more grapefruit. But then I'm going to take the stamp and I'm going to reposition it. I'm gonna rotate the stamp and reposition it over it so that it fills in all the white stripes. So I'm making sure I have it in the right spot and then I will place it down over my project and then I can move it to the door of my MISTI. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other two colors. So I'm going to start out with Buttercup and just kind of go right across that area, stamp that down, and then I'm going to, without cleaning the stamp, go over it with sea glass. 
This is going to get a mix of those uh, two colors and get a little more of a green in some spots. So then I stamped that down. So now I have a full background and I really love how this turned out too. It's, it looks very modern. It looks like a really cool art print. So I have all three of these. I've got my second attempt, my first attempt, and then the third. And I was trying to decide which I wanted to use. And at this point, that first attempt, the ink has been soaking into the paper and it's smoothing out. And I didn't mind that sort of grayish area anymore. I kind of liked it. So I decided to go with my first attempt. I think that turned out really, really well. I'm glad I did experiment, but I'm going back to that first attempt. I'm gonna keep it really simple with just a greeting from the Greetings Mix 2 stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm gonna be stamping this in sea glass. I have yet to use these inks with a sentiment or even like a solid shape like this. So I wanted to see how they would perform. Since this is the first month, uh, like this capsule paper crafting month, this is the first time I've used these inks. So far, I've been very impressed with the inks. The colors are fantastic. The coverage is solid. So I really love these and I wanted to try it out with a kind of like a greeting image. So I stamped it twice to get a really, really solid color. And I thought that worked really well. It was. Uh, nice sharp edges. I like how it turned out. I'm now using the, I think this color is called Dove from Concord and Ninth, and I just cut that in half and then scored it at five and a half to create a top folding A2 sized card. I put foam all along the back of my stamped panel and I sort of rotated it and turned it around and tried to get it uh, the orientation that I thought would look best. And then I took my scissors and trimmed out my grating. I just fussy cut around this heart shape, leaving a little bit of a white border around the outer edge. And then I put some foam adhesive behind the heart and then placed that directly onto my card front, sort of off to the left side, uh, more near the bottom. And that is my card for today. I love how this turned out. I wanted to go to other two panels and experiment with them, maybe added some different greetings. I think they all turned out really, really great. I hope you enjoyed that card for today. I loved the color combination. Like I mentioned uh, during the voiceover, I want to make a couple more cards like this, um, particularly with those colors. I think that'd be really, really cool. Now, this is when I'm going to get real with you guys and tell you about my thoughts so far on the challenge this month. I think for whatever reason, it's been more of a challenge than it was the first time around. I think it's because I spent a lot more time when I did this in February picking out very methodically and very intelligently which stamp sets I would include. And this time around, I wanted to like try out things I hadn't tried before. And I also wanted to try out a watercolor set I'd never tried before. And so what I learned is when you're doing this, don't pick things you haven't tried beforehand and that, and that you love. You really need to make sure you're using things you absolutely love, especially if you're limited to only those supplies for a certain amount of time. So that is what I've learned so far. Now for the last little bit of this video, I wanted to share with you guys another uh, response I received from a viewer when I asked you all how card making impacts your life. I wanted to know your why. Why do you make cards? Uh, why do you do what you do? And this was a really heartfelt message and I thought it'd be really fun to share with you guys. Okay, Sylvia says, I love making cards for good causes as donation the most. My favorite is our local hospice. As my parents died many years ago, both had many years of sickness. I am so grateful for these devoted people. Hello, dear Christina. This is Sylvie from Germany. Yeah, I saw your story and oh, it made me cry, not because you were crying, but I so deeply understand and just thinking about what we card makers can do in this world to make it a little bit better, to spread kindness, to raise money by our donations is such a blessing and I cry every time when I make my donation. When the cards are ready and are lying in front of me and we arrange the date uh, to pick them up or to uh, have the date where uh, one of the workers from the hospice comes to me because currently I'm not allowed to go into it. It's full of tears.
And these are tears of gratitude. Uh, so especially with my background, um, my parents didn't die in a hospice. They died in a hospital or in a caretaking home. Um, but I especially appreciate those people in here in my hometown in Bavaria in Germany. We have one of the best hospice and these people are, you can't even imagine what a big heart they have and they really are so loving and devoted and so this is my all-time favorite i generally love to give cards but this is the most joyful and the most tearful way in a good way so sending you lots of love and blessings thank you so much sylvia i think i called you sylvia before but you introduced yourself as sylvia thank you so much for that heartfelt message i loved hearing your voice I didn't even know you could send voice messages on Instagram until a few months ago. So it's just kind of cool and fun. I loved hearing your story and your heartfelt message. And thank you so much for sharing with all of us. Remember the why of why you do what you do and let that be the guiding force in what you do every day. I think that's the best way to go about it. Thank you so much for joining me today. On screen, I have two more videos for you to check out. Um, one will be uh, last Friday's live stream. You can watch the replay. In it, I used some supplies from the Capsule Paper Crafty Challenge for this month, but I did you know, use some additional items. And the other video is number four in my Capsule Card Challenge or Capsule Paper Crafty Challenge. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in another video very soon.